Paul Washer, I listened to his sermon the other day and he was talking about sin. And one of the things that he said is there are people who say, oh, I have a, a new relationship with Christ. I have an even stronger relationship with the Lord. I feel like I'm even closer to God. And he says, when they say that, he'll say to them, do you have a new relationship with sin? Do you have a new relationship with sin? Which means y'all not peas in the pods anymore. You're not in that closeness with sin. So a lot of people say, oh yes, I feel refreshed. I feel brand new. I'm closer to God than ever before. And his question is, and do you have a new relationship with sin? Do you have a new relationship with sin? And by that, I don't mean new as in rekindled and even closer. Have you changed the type of relationship you have? Do you still have sin that is right there with you that you're holding on to and doing whatever with and continuing to obey God? Or have you made your relationship where it is distance and no longer? Guys, we have got to wake up. You don't have a relationship with God if you're continuing to sin. If you continue in sin, we are not of Christ. You are not of God if you sin. You cannot say, I am a Christian, I am following God, and you're walking in darkness. The word of God says it's a lie. You lie. And I'm not coming here to condemn you. I'm not coming here to come at you wrong. But the thing is this. We're living in the last days. Are you that comfortable? Are you that comfortable in your sins? Are you that comfortable with yourself that even though you know that your life is as a vapor, a tree has more resilience than you do. A tree is, you are more, you are fra more fragile than a tree because if someone chopped that tree down, it will grow. The roots are deep, are, are so deeply rooted that that tree can come back again. You cannot. And though we go to church and we believe and we hear that God can come back at any moment, we hear about hell, we know it's real, we know about the wages of sin, we still continue in sin. People still continue just doing the things that they want to do. How do you know that you do not die in the next hour? How do you not know if you will die the next day? So how do you continue in sin? Are you that confident that God is just going to keep you this time? Well, he's kept me all this other time. Let me try one more time. God is not concerned about how well you can sing. He is not concerned about how well you can dance in the praise team. God is not on, or on the, uh, the dance team in the church. He does not, and he is not impressed by how well you preach and how eloquently you speak. He's looking at if you are obeying him. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's it. It is a choice and it is a lifestyle that we choose. It is not that I am more holier than thou than anybody else, but I will tell you that you have got to put your flesh under subjection. It's not that I've arrived so much that I can never fall into fornication. I can never fall into whatever. No, I don't put myself in those positions. I think any Christian will be ignorant to think I'm so full of the spirit that I can go, go Netflix and chill with my brother. I go Netflix and chill with my sister. I can go here and hang out. No, that's not what it is. Are you witnessing or are you partaking? Okay, so what I do and what we have to do is to stay away from those things. Not that you can't go out into the world because we live in the world, but we're not of the world. So in the same thing, not putting yourself in positions where you will fall. If you know that you, you have issues with your flesh, don't put yourself in position where you're up at night talking to people on the phone, going to people's house, people come over, coming over to your place, get into these isolated incidents where you and this person can be watching certain things on television that will stimulate your flesh. Things of that nature. I mean, there's just so much. There's so many getting around the people that did the things that you used to do. And my whole thing is people may say, well, I'm being a witness. Are you? Are you influencing or are you being influenced? There is the difference. Okay? 
people would say Jesus sat with sinners and they came to him and they wanted, they were drawn to him. So they came to him and he was teaching them. He sat with them. He didn't go find them. Okay. And even in some cases with Jesus, like the woman at the well, the Samaritan lady, um, the woman at the well, and he spoke to her, you know what? He was telling her about the word of God. And they were outside in daylight at the well. He didn't go into her little area to go talk to her. He didn't go into her tent, her dwelling, to sit and talk with her one-on-one, -on -one, what's going on. No. Jesus was in every way tempted, just as we were, and yet he was without sin. So what I'm saying is, as Paul Washer says, you can see here and say, you, oh, I got a new drive for God and I got a new, you know, prayer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm praying with fervency. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But is your relationship with sin? Do you have a new relationship with sin, which is no relationship with sin? That is important. Let us stop banking on forgiveness. Let us stop banking on forgiveness. God will forgive you, but the enemy will not. And God is not a God that he is going to lie. He is a righteous God. He is a holy God. He is a just God. He gives you this. Let's just imagine a 12 inch ruler. Let's imagine on each end is the 12 inch, uh, the 12 inch end is the end of your grace. This is death. And you have all this grace in between. And God keeps on forgiving you and 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 warning 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 you and forgiving. This is grace. But every time you continue on that path, you get closer. You get closer to here where the enemy is like, okay, God, you got your hedge around her. You got your hedge around him, but you got to be true to your word. And God may even give you a little more. And he keeps telling you and keeps talking to you and forgiving you and forgiving you and warning you and forgiving you and warning you and forgiving you and warning you. And he may not even move it. Forgiving you and warning you and 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 forgiving you and warning you until finally. The wages of sin is death. This message is not to bring damnation. But to say, hey, Jesus loves you. There is an end to sinning. Your works means nothing. What he's looking at and what he's looking for is obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. There's no sin that is too great. God is not an unfair God that, oh, this is so tough. I can't get out. You just got to show up, get in his presence, and he'll help you with whatever it is that you're struggling struggling with but the truth of the matter is a lot of people love the struggle they love what it is that they're going through they don't want to stop don't wait until whatever it is that you're playing with becomes a sword impale yourself with sin Jesus loves you he wants to bring you out and he can you just have to make that choice.